A particle accelerator is a type of scientific instrument used to accelerate subatomic particles to very high speeds and energy, and then collide with a target to produce other subatomic particles, such as antimatter or high energy photons. A recent example is the experimental confirmation of the Higgs boson. Particle accelerators can take many forms, but the biggest, most powerful ones generally consist of a series of electromagnetic fields that accelerate particles to high speeds and steer them along a particular path. In the case of the highest energy particle accelerators, that path would curve along itself into a circle. Particle accelerators are often built underground for several reasons. First of all, radiation shielding. Particle accelerators produce high energy particles and radiation as byproducts of their operation, which can be harmful to humans. By building underground, the Earth acts as a natural shield against this radiation, protecting both the environment and people nearby. Second, stability. Building a particle accelerator underground provides stability against the vibration, ambiental noise, and disturbances that can occur above ground, such as ground vibration from nearby traffic, noise from nearby towns. These vibrations can interfere with the delicate measurements and experiments that take place within the accelerator. The particles accelerated within an accelerator are often traveling at near light speeds, and any interference from any other source can disrupt the beam and the experiments that depend upon it. By placing the particle accelerator underground, it is shielded from cosmic rays and any other sources of background radiation that could interfere with the beam or measurements. And lastly, space requirements. Particle accelerators can be very large. Building them underground provides the necessary space while taking valuable surface area. Overall, building particle accelerators underground provides a controlled and stable environment that is ideal for conducting experiments with high energy particles. The particles are typically generated by an electron gun, which emits a stream of electrons or by ionizing a gas or solid material to produce a beam of charged particles. Electron beams have heated filaments that will generate a flow of electrons when heated in a vacuum. They're also used in industry for coating or etching. I personally use e-beams in grad school to evaporate material that will form thin film structures where you could place your material in an evaporation cup and heat it with a curved electron beam that travels through a magnetic field. You could change the magnitude of the magnetic field to control the, the electron beam and what is being targeted. Particle accelerators are used in fundamental research to study the behavior and properties of subatomic particles and to search for new particles that may be produced at very high energies, such as those particles that would have existed at the beginning of time at the Big Bang. In the Three Body Problem series of novels, the invading aliens, Trisolarians, deploy Sophons to Earth, which are single proton mobile computers. They are sent to stop human scientific advancement by interfering with the data reported from Earth's particle accelerators, preventing any further breakthroughs in quantum or particle science. CERN, the European Organization for Nuclear Research, is one of the leading institutions in the world for the production and study of antimatter. CERN has several particle accelerators, such as the Large Hadron Collider, that are capable of producing high energy particle beams that can create antimatter particles, and is the highest power particle accelerator on Earth with capacity of up to 6.8 tetraelectron volts per beam. The Large Hadron Collider LHC, it is located near Geneva, Switzerland, and is operated by the European Organization for Nuclear Research CERN. The LHC is designed to accelerate protons and heavy ions to almost the speed of light and then collide them together, producing new particles that can be studied by the physicist. The collisions take place in four main detectors, Atlas, CMS, LHCB, and ALICE. The Large Hadron Collider is a circular tunnel that is 27 kilometers, about 17 miles, in circumference and located 100 meters or 330 feet underground. And it uses powerful magnets to steer a beam of particles around the ring and radio frequency cavities to accelerate them. The Higgs boson was first observed by the Atlas and CMS detector at the Large Hadron Collider in 2012. Its discovery confirmed the existence of the Higgs field, a crucial piece of evidence supporting the standard model of particle physics. One of the ways that antimatter is produced at CERN is through the collision of high energy particles with a target. When these particles collide with the target, they can produce antimatter particles that are detected and studied. The production of antiparticles at CERN is a relatively rare event and a significant effort is required to collect and store small amounts of antimatter that are produced. In addition to producing antimatter, 
CERN also has facilities for studying the properties and interaction of antimatter particles. These studies are helping scientists to better understand the nature of antimatter and its relationship to normal matter. CERN's work on antimatter has important implications for our understanding of the universe and the fundamental laws of physics. The study of antimatter can help answer questions about the origin of the universe, the nature of dark matter and dark energy, and the behavior of matter and energy at extremes in very high energy environments and, and at very small scales. The Tevatron was a particle accelerator located at the Fermi National Accelerator Laboratory, Fermilab, in Batavia, Illinois, United States. It was in operation from 1983 to 2011 and was the world's highest energy accelerator for more than two decades. The Tevatron ceased operations on the 30th of September 2011 due to budget cuts and because of the completion of the Large Hadron Collider, which began operations in early 20. 10 and is far more powerful. Having two 7 tetra electron volt beams at the Large Hadron Collider compared to the one tetra electron volt beam at the Tevatron, even if CERN uses accelerators for only making antimatter, it could produce no more than about one billionth of a gram per year. To make one gram of antimatter would take about one billion years. The total amount of antimatter produced in CERN's history is less than 10 nanograms. The cost of antimatter is extremely high, and the efficiency of antimatter production and storage is very low. About 1 billion times more energy is required to make antimatter than is fully contained in its mass. One gram of antimatter contains roughly 25 million kilowatt hours of energy. Taking into account low production efficiency, it would take 25 million billion kilowatt hours to make just one gram. And that would cost more than a million billion dollars. So like, infinite money. Producing antimatter is hard enough, storing it is a completely different matter. For any usage as a weapon, fuel, or energy source, antimatter would need to be stored in a stable environment until needed. Generally in sci-fi, this is managed through magnetic fields with batteries on them that are able to contain antimatter, pushing it away from regular matter to prevent it reacting. Therein lies a challenge, storing it, without it being able to interact with nearby matter. And just a curiosity because I believe it's only happened once in history, but here's the story of the first person to get hit in the head with a beam from a particle accelerator, taken from Wikipedia, Anatoly Petrovich Bukolsky. As a researcher at the Institute for High Energy Physics in Brovino, Russia, Anatoly was working with the largest particle accelerator in the Soviet Union, the U-70 cyclotron. On July 13, 1978, Bugorsky was checking a malfunctioning piece of equipment when the safety mechanisms failed. Bugorsky was leaning over the equipment when he was struck in the head in the path of a 76 giga electron volt proton beam. Reportedly, he saw a flash brighter than a thousand suns. The beam passed through the back of his head, occipital, and temporal lobes of his brain and out through the left side of his nose. Ugorsky understood the severity of what had happened, but continued working on the malfunctioning equipment and initially opted not to tell anyone what had happened. The left side of his face swelled up beyond recognition over the next few days, and, and skin started to peel, revealing the path that the proton beam had burned through parts of his face, his bone, and the brain tissue underneath. As it was believed, he had received far in excess of a fatal dose of radiation. However, Bugorsky survived, completed his PhD, and continued working as a particle physicist. There was virtually no damage to his intellectual capacity, but the fatigue of mental work did increase markedly. He is currently 80 years old and still alive. Let's hope him and his family well. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and like and subscribe if you like this type of content. Any support is appreciated and it really helps out a small growing channel.